<laughs> Little soot, getting the job done. To the regular viewers of our channel, this vehicle here hardly needs an introduction. This is, of course, is Old Sooty. Now, Old Sooty is a really tough, unsung hero on our channel. This vehicle here has done more tough trips than most people have had hot dinners. In fact, it's done probably about four or five laps around Australia. It's done all the hard tracks. It's been to Cape York three times. Ah, uh, this is the point of no return. This the bit right here. This is where you're in. Been to the snow a few times. This is the most amazing four-wheel drive experience I've ever probably had. It's been to Tassie probably four or five times. Oh, <laughs> welcome to Tassie, they say. <laughs> the smelliest bog holes in Australia. Plus every other hard track in between. And it gets used, it gets abused, and it just keeps coming back for more. So in this episode, I'm gonna tell you a whole bunch of stories about Sooty, go behind the scenes and tell you a heap of stuff you probably didn't even know. So let's get into it. So before we get into the nitty gritty technical details about Sooty and start answering your questions, it's important we probably go back to the start and have a quick look at the history of old Soot. So the year was 2017, not that long ago, and I was driving the original Dirty 30 down in the tracks of um, the high country, Victoria. Now, it was the old Dirty 30. You probably remember uh, the state of that thing from when we looked at the old 30 series uh, recently on our channel. It was absolutely done. That was actually its last trip it ever did. Um, I started finding huge cracks in the chassis. Um, the spring hanger was about to come off and my whole diff was about to move around. I had no brakes. The thing was an absolute death trap. And right then and there, it went on a tow truck um, to never be driven again. Um, it was a really sad ending for the Dirty 30. It's sort of done its time. And you know the problem was though, I'm in the high country. I know I've got a trip a month later, which is a bunch of hard four wheel driving. I need another vehicle, quick smart. So, I rang around um, all the people I know. I eventually got onto my mate up at NQ Crash. Um, he had a 1HDT diesel 80 series, one that I've been chasing for a long time, a dream truck of mine sitting there. It was actually the one, he, he actually used it for himself. And um, he said, look, you can buy this one off me if you want. Um, it's ready to go. So sight unseen, I said, deal done. Um, and then the next moment was I flew straight up to Cairns grabbed this thing, drove it back. Now here's a funny story, because I had about, about a month to get this vehicle ready. So by this stage, I've probably got about two and a half weeks. I get to Cairns, uh, drive it straight back down to um, Brisbane. I didn't even drive it home, I drove it straight into the workshop of um, Custom RV, one of my mates, Daz. We had a two week mission to build this thing from a stock standard 80 series into something that was ready to take on the surface tracks in Australia. So basically no time to organise parts. We did a lot of fabrication on the bar work, our Daz did, to get this all sorted. Um, Organised a bunch of parts to turn up at the workshop and it was a two week build, including 12 volt. Probably one of the fastest builds ever, um, out of sheer necessity more than anything. And largely what you see today, this vehicle has not changed dramatically. A few little changes here and there, but this is a, the original sort. It hasn't changed. It's a setup that's just worked really well. And that's what I, I guess I like about this vehicle so much. This is a tried and tested vehicle, and it's nothing that special. It, it's an 80 series. It's got, you know, a couple of inches of lift, some tires, some lockers, and that's just about it. It's, a, it's every man's full wheel drive. I mean, it's got some really cool mods on it, there's no doubt about it, but it goes to show that even an old vehicle can keep up with the best of them and go through some of the toughest tracks in Australia, and also some of the most remote and um, best touring tracks in Australia. This vehicle can do it all. That's what I'm so proud about it. I love this vehicle. You know, you, you sort of spend enough time with the vehicle, you, you get attached to it. I've certainly developed a big attachment for Old Sooty and a lot of you guys have too. That's why we're doing this video. So um, that's the history of Old Soot. Let's get into a couple of your questions. Where did the name come from, Sooty? Actually, I put it out on Facebook when I first got the vehicle. I wanted to name this vehicle and I said, I said, look, and there was a whole stack of people came back with all names. It was actually Jocko, he was following this vehicle, and he started just calling it Sooty because it was uh, sooting a hell of a lot. A lot of uh, black soot would come out of the back of these cars, especially when I first got it. Nothing has changed. That's the funny thing about old soot. I think once you give it a name like Sooty, it's got a certain name to live up to. It always soots. I've changed the engine in this vehicle. I've changed um, the injectors and the pump recently, and it still soots like a champion. <laughs> Next question is, well that's a good one as well, and you guys will probably want to hear this one, about the damage report on Sooty. What's the most damage I've ever done on Soot? Let's have a look over here. Now, starting off, this clean door right here, 
This was one of the major bits of damage I ever did on Sooty, and it's it was a heartbreaking one as well. I was so upset at myself because look, I can handle if I've tried to drive one of the harder tracks, and you know I sort of zig when I should have zagged, do a bit of panel damage. Look, that's all you know. You pay to play sometimes. The damage I did on this one was very significant. I crushed and caved this whole door in and I wasn't even driving something. We weren't even filming at the time. We we're getting from one point to another point to start filming. I was driving through a little creek bed and I had my window down. It was the back of Port Macquarie or Warhope and a bunch of little flying insects came in through the window as I'm navigating through this river bend and I just started squatting them and stuff like that. I wasn't really paying attention where I was going and then I just heard this the crunch that you, every four-wheel driver dreads and I was like, the, the crunch was so bad I thought I'd destroyed the whole side of my vehicle. Got out, um, massive dent in this door, the whole door was caved in, I was so upset. I think I just sat down and looked at it for maybe about half an hour. The boys didn't even talk to me, they just let me be and then um, we drove on. So that's some of the worst damage I've ever done. Um, if we go back up here, this has been repaired. This was all caved in before. Um, I've, I've, I've hit this a few times off-road. Um, there's a there's a recent one, but that's nothing. That's 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 absolutely nothing. But this has all been repaired. Uh, it's been popped back out. It's actually looking pretty good for the moment. Um, flares. I I, see, I tend to do a lot of damage on flares. I probably go through a set every sort of year and a half, and then I, I sort of freshen them up, put some new flares on it, give it a bit of a birthday. At the moment, they're a little bit sad. I've um, got cracks all through them. They're pretty strong though. These ones, they do last. I just give them a hard time. Um, the biggest damage I've ever done a sooty. Um, actually was up in Cape York, I did an engine on gunshot. So you might remember the episode, I've come down in Sweden. It's the first time I actually tried to drive gunshot. Now, there's a couple of things. Now, it's all my own fault, which I'm pretty annoyed about. Um, I went down into the mud, I didn't turn the engine off straight away, which you really should do, because the oil pickup is in the back of these ones. It basically didn't pump enough oil through for a little while. We had a drum with a winch, I was too busy trying to get out and not really thinking about um, the engine and about a bit of mechanical sympathy. Got out, um, had a bit of a knock to the engine, and that's the only time Sooty's gone back on a, on a um, tow truck. It had a bit of a knock on the um, engine, and I didn't want to risk it, so we took it back. We had to rebuild the engine. It wasn't pretty, 100% um, my fault. Learned a lot that day. Um, if you're ever going down gunshot, you find yourself in a really steep angle off-road, turning that vehicle off can actually save your motor. So that's something I've, um, I learned the hard way, and uh, hopefully I can pass it on to you guys. You don't make the same mistake. We'll go around the back of this vehicle. Not too much damage, really. Um, little dent there, that's because I, oh, and, and the back here, I've run into a couple of trees reversing off-road. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, we'll call them car park wounds. Around here, now this rear bar is buggered. Now the story with this rear bar is it's pretty cool, like, because I, I picked actually my mate Jesse, um, you've seen Jesse before, he, he's the king of finding bargains for secondhand parts off-road. Found this rear bar for me. Um, I wanted to carry my spare tire, was the main reason I put a rear bar on it. Uh, got it for I think 200 bucks off Gumtree. It was, look, it's pretty fair, it was pretty secondhand. Um, had big rust holes and stuff, but it was a cool old bar. For 200 bucks you can't really go wrong. Now, in that time, the mounts have all broken under here. This bar actually moves, I don't know if you can see that. You see that? See the bar move around? It's, it's moving, it's all cracked. I need to replace this bar. I need, I need to, I would like to get a, like a bit lighter weight, sort of lower profile bar for old Sooty. So, I don't know, we might have to find something else for it. But that's, that's a bit buggered. Big dent here. This one here, this is annoying. This was all my fault. Again, we weren't even filming, we are on the, we are on a night run. Again, out the back of Warhope. What's with me and Warhope? We're coming out of a night run, I had my brother in the vehicle, I believe. And um, we'd finished up, we're just coming back out of the track for the night and there was a, I, I hit this log with my front tyre that spun another log back out and hit the side of the vehicle. Huge big bang and caved all this in and then also then I've hit it um, uh, off-road as well. So it's just had a, it's had a few hits, this, this old guard, but that's okay. And as you can see, the flare's a bit buggered here as well, what's left of it. Stood up the side, that's um, a crusty exhaust. I had to cut it underneath the wheel. That's just, just to get me home sort of thing, and I haven't really changed it since then. Um, overall though, the vehicle is pretty neat, uh, except for this door. Sorry, that's not that neat. Actually, every panel, a bit of character for old Sooty, if you ask me. This vehicle gets used. I'm not afraid to wheel it, as you might have known by now. Um, it does suffer a bit of cosmetic damage, but overall, it still looks like a pretty clean vehicle. What engine does Sooty have? Now, all the Toyota fans will know exactly what this one is. This one here is a 1HDT. It's the factory turbo diesel. Now, um, 
Different from a 18Z, which is the um, naturally aspirated one. It's got a very different head, and it's obviously got a turbo. Um, then, of course, I went to the FT motor, which was a 24 valve. This is only the 12. And then um, that was like the pinnacle of the 80 series motor, the one that's like the unicorn, really hard to find. This one here, of course, it's old school cool. Um, it's the, you know, it's it's I reckon is one of the best motors ever. And a step up from a 1HZ to a 1HDT is nothing short of amazing. Um, so much better motor, I believe. It's quite controversial. 1HZ's are ultra reliable, um, but I reckon this is just a, such a better motor than a 1HZ. Um, and uh, they can handle a bit of boost as well. They don't mind that. If you are gonna put a little bit of boost in it, uh, I suggest you get the ARP head studs in this thing. Uh, they do lift heads. Um, I speak from experience when I first got it. It was very powerful, made some great power. And unfortunately, I kept getting coolant everywhere because it was lifting the head. And um, those ARP head studs are a must have. What's the current odometer reading in Big Sword? I get asked that a lot, how many Ks are on this thing? Um, it's currently showing 460,000 almost on the dot, but you've got to keep in mind the Speedo wasn't working for about 12 months. But realistically, this vehicle's probably got about 520, 530,000 Ks. It's a very reliable vehicle. Sooty's extremely reliable considering what I put it through. That's what these big car manufacturers really built their reputations on. Vehicles like Sooty, um, old 80 series, um, they are legendary for a good reason. They're super reliable. Um, you know, it's nothing uncommon to not touch a vehicle like this for half a million Ks if you treat it right. What sort of engine mods have I got to Soot and how much power and torque does it make? Um, that's a good question. At the moment, I don't know exactly, which um, last time I had it on the dyno, I think it was making about 125 kilowatts, which is quite, is very reasonable for this motor and probably about uh, 480 newton meters of torque. So look, it's not a big horsepower hero, but um, it doesn't matter what the numbers tell you. It's how it drives off road. So in low range second gear, this thing will have just as much torque as nearly any other vehicle I've ever owned. Um, it gets all that usable power to the ground and um, that makes it very drivable. So it's plenty. I think anything over 100 kilowatts is um, you absolutely laughing in terms of four wheel drives. Torque is a big one. You wanna make sure you make your torque early in the rev range. That way, when you need your power, like you're getting into a bog hole, you need to put your foot down and get out of that bog hole quickly, you can. Those ones that have high horsepower usually make their power later in the rev range and uh, that's no good for forward driving. That's good for impressing people on the beach maybe, but not, not good for when you're in the thick of it. So um, just speaking of engine mods though for a second, it's got a, it's pretty basic. It's got a water to air um, intercooler on it. Um, that was on the vehicle when I bought it. I haven't touched it. I've been meaning to swap this over for many, many years, um, but I haven't. Um, it's got a catch can, it's got a secondary filter, and apart from that, it's all pretty much standard 80 series. Actually, it reminds me of a cool mod I did once. Now, have a look at this one. I want to show you this. This is cool. You, a lot of people are probably thinking like, what's he done? He used cut a bit of his grill out. It must be something to do with getting huge horsepower. Nah, not at all, not at all. Now, one time, my, my bonnet latch was like, it just wouldn't release nicely, and I decided I'd uh, do a bit of, you know, maintenance on the weekend, had a few beers, I, I took this apart, and I decided to oil it up. I cleaned it all apart, took the latch out. Now, one thing, you know, here's a little tip, if you ever decide to do this, when you put it back together, make sure you put the release clip back into it, like the little bit of wire that runs down into your engine bay so you can actually open your bonnet, because I put it all back together, it was all really nice, shut the bonnet, it closed perfectly, Went to go open it up, realised hadn't actually put the wire back in, so I couldn't open my bonnet. So I'm sitting there thinking, how do I, I need to access inside that engine bay for sure. So, little brainwave, decided I'd uh, cut a little hole in here so I could get to these bolts up here. I could unbolt it from inside the grill and then, uh, it's just a drama. But look, that's just what, that's, that's the reason why I've got that. It's not for more airflow or because I've done any cool um, engine mods is just because I stuffed up when I was trying to do a bit of maintenance one day and uh, yeah, that's a funny little story about soot. What have I done to make the engine in sooty bush proof? Um, come with me, have a look. As you can see, it's, look, it's pretty standard Toyota. <laughs> that's, that's, that's about as bush proof as you can get. Um, little things though, these, this mess right here, ignore this messy wiring, it's actually a lot better than it ever has been, but um, these, these here are those little inline filters you can buy for about a dollar each. Now they're all connected to this fuel hose, which are my diff breathers. I've got two diff breathers and I've got a um, gearbox breather. Now they're all up here high in the engine bay. That's a great one to do. Now that'll cost you about, oh heck, it'd be well under $100 to do it yourself. Or even way less than that, to be honest with you. Um, guarantee you should do that with every vehicle. Put diff breathers, put a breather kit on the vehicle. You don't want your diffs filling up with water every time you go through a water crossing. Um, that's the way to get good life out of it. Um, other than that, regular servicing, 
So I try and change the oil on this one every 5,000. Um, I always carry a spare fuel filter, um, just in case we get a bad bunch of diesel or something. I've got a secondary fuel filter on this vehicle, don't need to worry about it. I've got a catch can. Um, other than that, just you know, try and treat it nicely and um, the vehicle will look after you. Now I get asked this a heck of a lot because it does look like a very big vehicle, but in actual, actual fact, it's only got about a two inch, two and a half inch lift in this thing. I always try and keep my vehicles a really low center of gravity. That's one of the things I changed from the original build. I originally had a four inch lift in this vehicle and 35s. It was a big, big vehicle then. It used to flex, you know, good. There's no doubt about it. It flexes just the same now with a uh, two and a half inch lift. It's got lots of down travel. If you can get your suspension and get lots of down travel, um, you can get away with a smaller lift. As long as you can fit your decent sized tires on it, I reckon that's the best combination. So I'm running um, a set of formula shocks in this vehicle. It's got some superior engineering arms in it um, that'll help it to flex a hell of a lot. Interesting fact though, I've got the standard steering arms on this vehicle. Now, it, probably about two years ago, I got a slight little bend in the steering arm. Now that's really common, especially on a live axle vehicle, if you're running standard arms. Um, I've bent a whole stack across my career. Um, this one has a slight bend in it, not really bad. Darren from Custom RV actually gave me a second, a second hand one, a spare one, before a trip. He said, that's gonna go in no time at all, so here, have a spare. The second you carry spares with you, of course, nothing happens, that's Murphy's Law. Um, this steering arm is the original one in there. Has, it's got a slight bend in it, but it's not too bad. I do carry a spare behind the seats, though. And this one here um, relates to the part-time kit on Sooty. Now, he's asking, he's thinking about doing the same thing. Is it worth it? Now. Sooty came with a part-time kit in it. Now, 80 series, except for the, the base model ones, are all all-wheel drive, so they don't have um, manual locking hubs. Mine came with a part-time kit in it. Um, I love it. I wouldn't change it back, put it that way. Um, I love that it's, it's, it's quite bush-proof sort of setup. If you want, you can disengage one wheel. Um, you know, you can't obviously do that with a, with a um, full-time four-wheel drive. I, I just, it just works, I haven't had any dramas. Um, another interesting fact, um, when we're going through all the damage and all the breakages I've sort of done over the years, you'll notice I never said CVs. Touch wood, I have never broken a CV in sooty. So it runs big tires, you know, it's got a bit of power and I'm not scared of you know, giving a good punt when I need to. I've never actually broken a CV. I have broken a couple of hubs, but they're quite easy to fix. Um, Never really broken it. The other thing I've broken at the front, which is a common thing for 80 series, is the bolts that hold your swivel hub together, your kingpin bolts. They do notoriously get loose on 80 series, and when they get loose, you can snap them. When you snap them, the whole front end falls apart. And um, like me, I found myself on the side of a track with the wheel um, completely on the pierce, had to fix it. Luckily, I had some spares. Jocko actually had a whole swivel hub, which is the most random thing ever, um, in the back of his Hilux, and he obviously runs a 80 series front diff, so. Uh, we're able to get that thing off the track pretty easily. Now I do get asked a lot about this, is why I took the old uh, roof rack off Sooty. Um, and another question that's been um, asked, am I gonna put a rooftop tent on Sooty? Um, yes, I love rooftop tents, they're really cool. But the reason I took the old roof rack off is the old roof rack started to rust a heck of a lot and um, started transferring a little bit of rust into my, into my gutters. So I, I took it off and also it weighs a ton as well. So if I was to put another rooftop tent on, I'd uh, be looking for a really lightweight solution. And um, same with the roof rack, as light as I could possibly go to put less weight on that roof. Obviously weight up high, change your center of gravity a hell of a lot. Um, I predominantly drive this thing on tough tracks, so I want to make it more capable. The more capable your vehicle is on the hard tracks, the less damage you tend to do, and the less times you find yourself in very precarious uh, situations off-road with big wheels in the air and stuff. So I want to try and keep it nice and lightweight as much as I can. Here's another question, am I gonna chop it? Um, must be getting a bit of a reputation for chopping vehicles or something, but look, originally, yes, I was gonna chop Sooty. Um, I was gonna chop it into an extra cab ute, it was gonna be a really cool build. And then, it was around that sort of time when I was just about to put the knife through old Soot here, I decided that I would um, revive the old Dirty 30, and um, that was another chopped vehicle, of course, so I thought, nah, if I'm gonna bring the old Dirty 30 and start that project again. I'm gonna leave this one as a wagon. And I'm really glad I did. I love the wagon. I, I don't wanna change it at all. I love the setup. It just works really well. It's it's cool to have a chopped vehicle, there's no doubt about it, but wagons, they're just, it's hard to go past a good wagon. <laughs> Here's a funny question. How many stains are on the inside of old Sooty? 
Quite a few, to be honest with you. Look, the way I see this is I've got pretty much every different shade of mud in Australia inside this vehicle. It's like, you know, you buy those little glass things full of all the different different coloured desert sands. Well, mine's all different coloured mud. Uh, I've got Tassie mud across a dash here. I've got glasshouse mud, that's the darker red colour. Um, even that black mud you can see on the other side, that's more of a Cape York mud. But yeah, look, it's, it's pretty filthy inside. You gotta keep in mind, this is, I wheel this thing a hell of a lot. I should clean in here, I, I need to actually. It's getting to the stage where you know, if you can survive here, there'll be no virus out there that could get you. I mean, it's 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 pretty rough and rancid in here, but but it is, it's a workhorse, and I'm not scared to get in here with muddy boots. I'm not scared to wheel it through some gross tracks. It's just all part of sooty. It, it just, I don't know, it just seems to attract a lot of mud, this car. So when it comes to the interior of big sooty, there's not, you know, leave the mud out of it for a bit. It's pretty simple and um, clean interior. Um, I've got my locker switches that are easy to get to. I've got a boost gauge. I've got an EGT gauge. They were in the vehicle when I got it. Um, it's a manual old sooty, which is cool. Handbrake doesn't really work unless it's been a pinnacle, which it has. So it does actually work at the moment, which is kind of cool. Um, I'll give it about two weeks though. Uh, other than that, I've got an old stereo I actually stole out of the Dirty 30 because I needed some tunes when I do the big Ks. Um, other than that, a few switches on the dash and that's about it. I've got some Stratos seats, uh, some Razorback covers protecting those. Nice, comfortable these seats. These Stratos ones, you can do a lot of miles in this vehicle. And now that I've got the aircon fixed as well, I mean, it really is a pretty luxurious little truck. You can go and do a thousand K a day in it, no dramas on the tarmac. And um, yeah, I, I just love driving this thing. It's got a lot of stories. The thing, the thing I'd change, I wouldn't, wouldn't go overboard with the interior of this vehicle. Um, I would get it's a really simple one, but believe you me, I don't have it done to this vehicle yet. I would, would like to put a 12 volt um, constant USB power. So even when you turn the vehicle off, I've got constant USB power just for charging GoPros and phones and things like that. I don't have it, which is a real pain because I've got to run a big long cable from the back to the front, which is, I know, it's one of the easiest mods you'll ever do on a four wheel drive, but I don't have it yet. All right, in the back here, it's pretty straightforward. Now, Drifter made me a custom draw set that I wanted basically, it's, if you look at the drawers, it's flat right to the back of the vehicle from here. So we've removed the rear seats of this vehicle. Um, it's all drawers through here. I've got a water tank, it's about 60 litres. It runs right across the middle here, nice and low, um, which is just a gravity fed, no pump or anything. They're just real simple. Um, I've got two storage drawers as well, one on this side. This has got a lithium battery, a Red Arc um, 100 amp hour lithium battery. I've also just noticed, well, I've got some, um, it's a bit muddy. I've got some silly string spray. I'm gonna get Graham with that next time he joins me off road. And I've also got one of these. <laughs> this little air horn. Um, that's still empty as well. Fair few pranks have been had with that one. I just remembered I've got that there, so that's good to know. Um, got some Max tracks in the back here. Um, on the other side here, the other drawer, I've got CVs and a few spare parts. I've got some fan belts and all sorts of spares in there. When it comes to the 12 volt system and big sooty here, you can see it's an absolute work of art. My mate Caleb put this one together. Uh, I won't go through all the details on this uh, 12 volt system, but if you do want to find out more, we have actually done a full video on the 12 volt system in sooty. Um, it's a cracker though, I love it. I wouldn't change a thing about the 12 volt system. You know, 30 amps worth of charge from a manager 30, got an inverter, um, I can put solar in. It just works really well. The only thing I'd probably change now, after having this vehicle for some time, is I'd probably change the location of where all my stuff sits. Um, I'm right in the mood at the moment of getting all the weight down low, uh, getting my center, uh, center of gravity down. So I'd probably try and hide some of this stuff in the back of drawers and things like that into, into dead space that I don't use and um, clean it all up a little bit so I could just have uh, my cargo barrier here that's unobstructed. I'd be able to see out the back too, which would be pretty handy. Um, we'll take you down the back to have a look. Look, look, this is a cool setup. I really like the way old soot um, is set up. It's super simple and it just works. Um, this is from Hurricane Fab, actually. It's it's storage in the back of old sooty here. Let me try and open that. A bit of mud in it, no doubt. Um, I can carry, like I've got a belt in there. I've got some weird muddy shoes when I'm walking around on oyster rocks. I carry a few spare pieces on the bigger trips in here. It's just wasted space, I mean, and I've been able to use it. Don't put too much weight in the back of your tailgate, though. Um, I love, you know, the tailgate, though. This is my seat off-road. I sit here all the time. Um, you know, this is a great spot. You get into camp before you set up, Crack a cold one, just really analyze the situation. Where you're gonna put your head up and your swag, you're gonna put an awning out tonight, all that sort of the big questions you need to sort of answer. It's a great spot to sit. Um, it's the back of the vehicle. I spend a lot of time here, I cook here. It's got everything I need. Fridge is on a drop down. I've got all this space here. I've got another drawer actually that sits in here that on the bigger trips I'll take. 
but um, I don't really need it. I've got so much storage space, to be honest with you. Um, in this side, this is where I keep um, a lot of my food and cooking gear. So I just run a bunch of these clear top bags in here. Um, you know, that's got all my cooking stuff, um, all my food, stuff like that. And then it's got a secret little compartment at the back here. So if people don't slide my drawer all the way out, they won't see all the yummies I've got in there. So that's where I keep my snacks um, on this side. This is more of the work drawer. So it's a big drawer, it's quite heavy. I carry tools, spare parts. Um, um, camp oven goes in there. Um, another cool little mod, you've seen this a million times. I've got a little switch here. I just got some lights on the top of the tailgate. Two lights, you know, even better than these lights, I reckon, are those like strips you just buy on eBay. The LED strips, it'll cost you about 10 bucks for about five meters of LED lighting. Um, really easy one to wire in at home on a switch. It's a great thing to do on the inside of your vehicle. A little bit of interior light when you're at camp. Um, like I said, I've got the clear view. That slide's been through hell and back. It works an absolute treat. I love having the um, fridge covered. Um, as long as it can breathe, the fridges need to breathe. Um, they need to get air through the compressor and stuff like that to run efficiently. This one can do that, but I don't get things falling down behind the fridge. There's nothing worse than that off-road. Heaps of space, you should keep the swag in there and a few other bits and ends. But um, that's pretty much the setup I run in the back of old soot here. Well, there you go. There's a pretty in-depth look at old Sooty here. Um, did upgrade the old mirrors. Got the next-gen clear views on here. I reckon they look even better. Um, but yeah, look, that's Sooty in a nutshell. You've got to keep in mind this vehicle has had a tough life. I mean, any vehicle that lives in my shed usually has a pretty tough life, but this one in particular, this is the real workhorse. It's the unsung hero of the fleet. It's probably the hardest worked four-wheel drive, at least in the history of our channel, four-wheel drive 24-7. And um, the good thing about it is, I wouldn't hesitate tomorrow to turn the key and go anywhere in Australia, whether it be a tough track in Coffs Harbour, the tip of Cape York, or around the Simpson Desert, this thing would do it. I'd have full confidence it would get me back home safely. So I guess I want to leave this video and ask you guys a question of what's next for Big Soot? What should I do to it next? Um, should I just keep wheeling it? Um, I want to let you know a little secret as well. Um, recently, a lot of you guys have known this one already, but recently I bought another 80 series with the plans of, um, it's the same sort of look as this one, it's the same colour, it's, uh, so it's got a blown petrol motor in it, and the whole idea was maybe swapping all the good bits on Sooty, when Sooty's had enough, and um, put it on this other 80 series and um, Sooty Mark II. I don't know, let me know what you think in the comments below, should I do that or just keep wheeling this thing till it falls apart? Let me know, maybe some other mods you think I should do to Big Sooty. Um, but any questions I didn't answer in this video, please put them in the comments below. I'm gonna go crack a cold one, go through some of your questions and do my best to answer all of those ones. Until next time though, folks, see you around.